Well, good evening and welcome to Case Filters UK's fortnightly Sunday session. My name is Ruth Taylor. I'm hosting these sessions uh, on behalf of Case Filters UK tonight. Very pleased to have Andrew, Andy. What do you want to be called, Andrew? Andy? Uh, and I think Andy. Andy, yeah. Andy, Andy Campbell, uh, who's a Case UK ambassador and also works for Case. Lots of you uh, might know him, so feel free to ask any kind of techie case questions uh, throughout the next half hour or so. We will be here for about half an hour. If you've been here before, you probably know how it works. Uh, basically, I'll be chatting to Andy, asking him some questions, and you are more than welcome to jump on into the live chat there, ask questions uh, all through, and we'll pick out those and ask them to Andy as we go along. Uh, there's a wee bit of a delay just on the chat before it gets to us, so just give us uh, a few seconds and we'll hopefully uh, pick those up. If you want to watch this again as well, as we usually say, it's always available on the Case Builders UK YouTube channel, so it should be available just after I think we finish live streaming tonight. So watch it again or send it to your friends, anything like that. Um, and yeah, I think that's about us, just double checking, yeah? So you're very welcome uh, to tonight's session. Do let us know in the chat where you're joining us from as well. It's always really interesting. And uh, Andy, this is not actually, I was just saying to you before, this isn't actually the first time that I've interviewed you, which is a first for me because I've not met any of the other people we've spoken to, but we actually met uh, a couple of years ago, wasn't it, at the photography show? Yeah, I think show. We, we worked out it was probably 2019, March 2019. March 2019. And you, uh, yeah, you interviewed me for your channel, um, mm -hmm. the, um, uh, as a, as you know, as with my case hat on, basically. Yes, yeah. so, so you were uh, actually the yeah. very first person that I ever interviewed. And uh, oh. you made it easy for me, so I'm I'm not that I'm not all that nervous tonight because I was terrified then a couple of years ago, um, but it's it's not so bad tonight. Yeah, well, as, as my colleagues would, tell, would always say, uh, talking's not an issue I have. This is what I love. This is what I love. <laughs> the interview. It's good. It's good. Um, so Andy, I mean, I was having a wee browse through through your stuff. You're I was I say multi-talented. You 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 shoot many different genres. Uh, photography. You've got a whole bunch of amazing astro stuff. You do your landscapes, your seascapes. A lot of urban stuff too, uh, which yeah, was a yeah, pleasant yeah. surprise to see as well. I mean, how did you start off? Why don't you just tell us first of all how you got into photography uh, in the first place? I don't know. I, I'd love to say when I was six, my grandfather <laughs> gave me a camera, but no, I, I lie. It would be a complete lie. Don't knock it. Was, don't knock it. Yeah, in 2013, uh, I, I actually had a look before tonight to check when it was. In 2013, I think I got my first, uh, what I would say is real camera, and it was an mm -hmm. interchangeable lens. Uh, Samsung uh, mirrorless camera, and yeah, Samsung a mirrorless camera. was your first camera. Wow, that's yeah. great. And, and that's it. I mean, I've only ever shot a mirrorless camera. I've never shot any other type of camera. So wow. I've never shot a DSLR. I've never shot film. Um, well, I say I've only shot. I mean, obviously before that, I must have had an interest in photography and had like bridge cameras and things like that and point and shoots. Um, but yeah, uh, my actually into real photography, yeah, 2013 with this Samsung camera. And then from there, my love of it kind of just blossomed. I was really lucky for uh, my job at the time was um, traveling all over the UK um, uh, for work. So I actually got to go to some lovely places and I was working for like IT for petrol stations. Mm -hmm. So for example, I mean, I remember doing a job in Glencoe before I sort of like started the photography and thinking do you know it'd be amazing to do some take pictures around here looking at the Scottish landscape and then from there I worked on the Isle of Skye a bit so up in your neck of the woods um and and I was like right I must get a camera I really must get a camera and learn how to take some pictures and, I was and say, did happened. you work for Case first or did you did you start taking pictures before you went over to Case no, uh, case, came, case came along because of taking pictures. And mm. uh, to be fair, I've been quite lucky in with photography that way. As for example, I think I, I had this, this Samsung camera that I I'd brought and it was like interchangeable. And then Samsung, I think about a year later, came out with this amazing like technology camera, which was one of its kind at the time. And they just happened to, I don't know, I might have been good at advertising myself or social media because my photography, if I look at it, was awful back then. <laughs> um, but they, they came to me and said, would you like to use our camera and be like an ambassador for Samsung? Yeah. And I mean, what idiot would say no to that? So yeah, I did. And, uh, yeah, and I gave them what they wanted. And, and then uh, probably a year later, they said, right, we've shown what we can do. We're going to stop making cameras now and just disappeared out of the market. Yeah. Random. It was the most short-lived ambassadorship <laughs> ever. Yeah. 
um, well, Kiss UK <laughs> ambassador now, so that's that's so much better. Well, yeah, I guess actually how that started. So if I move on to the case side of things, how that started is uh, case uh, case an Asian company, and they contacted uh, sort of like a, a friend of mine, Stephen Elliott, and another friend, Andrew, and then myself. And so I said, would you like to use our filters? And we're like, yeah, we'll try them. And then we tried them. They were excellent. Loved them. And all our friends started wanting to use them. We said, where can we buy them? And we were like, that's a good question. Case, where can, Case, where can we buy your filters? And they're like, we don't have anybody in the UK that's did this for them. And we put our heads together, the three of us. You've got me, Stephen, and Andrew. And we are now the Case distributors. We are Case UK. And what works really well is that you've got sort of like a three photographers that are the helm of this company we've got a lot more help now, now than just three of us yeah. trying to run it. Hmm. Uh, but we're the helm of the company and that means that all our customers this is my corporate helm now all our, all our customers can ask me or us all questions and we understand where they're coming from because we've all yeah. traveled that, exactly. you know, that journey basically yeah 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 and that's, that's but, um, yeah so that's how case uh, case existed um and i still work in it and i still work for care and i obviously part own case with the other guys in the yep. uk and somewhere in that i still try and squeeze in some photography for myself you do i mean you're out and about in the middle of the night you're out and about i think when you're working as well and all sorts of times so i was going to ask you later on if you've any other hobbies but i don't know if you actually have time for or anything else we, well lockdown's been quite good for hobbies so yeah <laughs> I mean, speaking of lockdown, I mean, I know a lot of people um, that I've spoken to said they've struggled quite a bit. A, obviously, we've been able to get out in the first place um, yeah. and the restrictions and stuff around that. And then also just the kind of uh, maybe the lethargy that comes in later on with not feeling the energy to actually go out and do anything. A lot of people have spent a few months actually not taking their camera out at all. I mean, how's, how's the past year affected maybe the way you shoot? Okay, so I during the first like serious lockdown we had, then obviously we all stopped. Everyone stopped. Um, it was uh, you know the, just, the the whole industry stopped basically, the photography industry, let alone us photographers. Yeah. Um, and then when we were allowed to get out again, we, a lot of us went out and with vigor and like we can shoot, we can shoot, we can shoot, uh, which was nice. But then actually the second one, I think. I actually lost my interest in taking the camera out, even though we could travel a little bit locally. I, I've definitely seen a bit of like photography, like, I don't know. It just didn't become so important, I think, is yeah. what it is. There's been mm. things that are far more important. You know, is my family all right? Mm. Are the people I work with all right? Are uh, our uh, wider, you know, like team of people here at Case, are we all right, if that makes sense? It's kind of brought the priorities uh, to the yeah. fore, but yeah, it, 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 yeah. yeah. But it also, it, I think a lot of people have probably ended up focusing on themselves quite a lot more and not in a in a, like a selfish way but in mm. i mean i've been on a massive health kick for the last year and a half which would never have happened if it wasn't for covid and it wasn't because i was worried about covid it was just because i all of a sudden i had the opportunity i was working from home all the time rather than being all over the place mm. which meant that if i took a lunch break i could go out for a walk or if i when you finish work at five o'clock not that you ever finish work at five o'clock if you're working for yourself, but if you know what I mean, you could then go and take a, like a bike ride or something like that. So it, yeah. I think our, our lifestyles have changed and that's probably why mm -hmm. photography has now become a little bit further down for me. But yeah. I'm very fortunate because it's not my job. Mm -hmm. So actually photography is my escape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which is, is yeah, all important. I mean, obviously you have been out and about taking shots. Um, yeah. And I mentioned at the beginning that you, you cover such a wide range. You, you do, do astro, you do cityscapes, you do, you know, in the woods, in the misty woods, out on the sea, out on the coasts, all sorts of things. I mean, do you have a do you have a favourite in all that? Do you have any preferences, or do you do you just love that? Do you love them all equally? Uh, do you know what I think I love about photography? I quite love the planning of the shot. So the conditions will say what I'm going to shoot because I'll say right, I'm going to go out. I've got that time to go and take a photo. The conditions will say what I'm going to take. So if you look at the weather forecast, yeah, they don't get it right, but they can give you a hint of what it's going to be like. And then I'll choose from that. So if it's a sunny, clear skies, then that's probably going to be, all right, I'll turn nocturnal and go out in the night. Mm -hmm. um, if it's going to be moody and, and like interesting, then that'll probably point me more towards um, like a landscape of some sort. You know, yeah. You know, yeah. And obviously living in Devon now, as I do, we just spoiled. We've got dark skies. We've got coast That's everywhere. Mm. Yeah, all within you know a, a drivable amount of time. Um, and then we've got the moors. The only thing I miss living down here is mountains. Don't we have any of them? Yeah, everything else though. 
I mean, yeah. I think I might swap out the mountains for everything you got down there. I mean, we had we had Jack in a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Jack Lodge, he's down that way as well, and just yeah. just so many options. Just and you know, as a photographer, I guess maybe even starting out, if you're not sure of the kind of thing you're interested in, you do have everything. You know, you can go to the coast and see the floats your boat, no pun intended, yeah. or you know, you can just choose. I mean, whatever you like. I mean, Astro. I don't think I've spoken to anybody so far that's that's done as much um, Astro, but you obviously go out through the night and and do some Astro shots. I mean, is there is there something particularly? I mean, it takes a lot to get out in the middle of the night. Is it one of those things that once you do it, you just get kind of hooked on it? Um, yeah, basically. Once you, <laughs> I, I've always looked up at the stars ever since I've been a child and thought wow because it's just so vast isn't it if you look up and you've got a dark sky and you can see so many stars and you're just like wow that's amazing and then once I learned you could actually take a picture of that and make it look quite good that was it I was hooked absolutely hooked loved mm -hmm. it um, and then I learned that actually just the picture of the sky isn't that interesting so that's when I then learned that you have to then choose i mean my my type of astro photography is have a strong subject I was with ask about that, yeah. so yeah and and i've always gone down the route with astrophotography of okay the picture is going to be about that in the dark to a degree and then i want to have like the sky almost like a oh afterwards so you see the subject and then you look after and go oh and, and it's, it's kind of that that's my way yeah. of trying to take an astrophoto I mean, I think the default, if someone probably is thinking of going out and starting to do that, is you, you point the camera up, you shoot the stars. But what is so interesting about your images is that they all have really strong foregrounds, really strong focal points. And then, like you say, you've got the stars up above. I saw one, I can't even quite remember what it was, but there was a bit of mist in between the foreground and the stars. And I just love that. It's almost, it was so, um, just such a yeah. gentle transition to the stars. It wasn't like, wow, stars in your face. It was just that, that yeah. beautiful well, match. <laughs> If you if you look at astrophotography, you've got there's there's quite a few people that say you must do it this way or that way, mm -hmm. and there is no way to do it. Do it how you want to do it. Basically, mm -hmm. is the answer. As mm -hmm. with any photography, there are, yes, there are rules there, and learn the rules, and then once you've learned them, you can then break, break them. them. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so astrophotography for me was uh, well, this is what appeals to me, and this is what I want to do, and mm -hmm. that that's how it happened. Basically, that's how my I guess you could call it a style. Happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, do, yeah. how do you choose your your foregrounds and things like that when it comes to astro? Do you just is it when you're during the during the day if you're going around you think that might make a really great? Uh, I mean, obviously you had the um, what was it called the comet Nero? Yes, comet Nero. That um, was yeah. That was that was just like it was a perfect opportunity, and mm -hmm. you know it was. But you had other ones with fishing boats in the front and with uh, yeah, different so things like that. that. I, was, I, I knew that local beach and. Uh, visited it for years and then thought do you know what it's going to be in perfect alignment for the milky way i'm sure we can have some fun there um it was quite a technical shot compared to mm -hmm. normal that one that one there i had too much light on the foreground because you're not something you normally complain about if you're doing astrophotography um and i had to have to use a case filter upside down an upside down grad filter to make yeah. the to make the, the foreground, the foreground darker so the sky <laughs> actually came out yeah interesting but, um, that of that was a that was a year I was concentrating on this competition where you had to put in something every week, um, and so there was a lot of planning and stuff that went into mm -hmm. ideas of what you could do because you know you're yeah. obviously limited to your, to what you can and can't do, and that was just one I had thought oh that would probably make a good picture and actually mm -hmm. probably turned out to be one of my best from the year especially for astro yeah. photography yeah yeah. So. Uh, pick question here from Andrew. Do you do on the fly planning, uh, for example, forecast changes and then you change from landscape, seascape, shoot to astro? Just think what you were saying before you, you shoot according to the conditions, don't you? You decide yeah. what to shoot according to the conditions. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't have the luxury, and I don't think many people do have the luxury of saying that I can go out any time I want. Mm -hmm. uh, astro photography, you've got to like write off the, the, the next day, basically, if you're shooting all night. Yeah. Yes um so i will i will find a weekend where i know i can write off the weekend and then i will shoot to that weekend basically and i'll shoot whatever's good thing and if if the conditions aren't going to be right around here where i am then that's when i might actually say i'll go a little bit further afield i'll travel a bit um but i'm spoiled down there really i'm spoiled for conditions and, and well, not conditions for locations so yes yeah. absolutely i mean i was on your uh, I think it was your instagram feed earlier on and looking at it from a distance it's like almost like a chessboard in that you've got a lot of um very minimalist. I know it's a square crop on Instagram anyway, but I think you like to crop kind of like that anyway. A lot yeah. of super minimalist, long exposures, that style of thing, which I know you you really, really love. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
is that an artistic thing for you? I mean, this is a question that we ask people in general. Is there anybody that you're um, inspired by artistically, or is that just something that comes to you again according to according to what you see, according to the conditions? Yeah, because I think I came possibly into photography in the way I did. Mm. I didn't actually know anything about photography, and therefore I didn't know anything about photographers. Um, that's obviously since changed a huge amount, but yeah. my style has come around quite naturally. If that makes sense, as in, mm -hmm. I like the, I like that. I like the look of it. I'm going to take the picture of it. I've then since once you then get into it, you then go, oh, I wonder who else does it similar, and that's when you start looking around. Yeah. But of course, yeah. if anything, in the job I'm doing, like working with you know with Case, I'm probably overexposed to photography to a degree mm -hmm. because we have so many amazing photographers that work with us that I'm inspired every day. I just see like one of their posts or, or something like that, and I go, "Oh, that's pretty amazing." Uh, mm -hmm. I wonder how they did that. And then it's something you're... similar, yeah. Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, but I, I think it's the same as anything. It's it's very hard in to be a landscape photographer and stand out with your own style is not something that's easy to do. No. So you basically just need to go and enjoy yourself, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. For me, that's... photography is my escape. There's there's nothing better for me than being pre-sunrise on the on the Devon Dorset Cornwall coast at wherever I am and watching the sunrise and mm. you know then uh, same as it is a bit standing in the middle of like Worcestershire near Stonehenge with the mist rolling through and the stars mm -hmm. above me yeah and the only person that's bothered me there was the security guard wondering what the hell was going on <laughs> middle of the night I mean I think that's key that's what everyone seems to be saying you have to really enjoy it in order for yeah. that to come through in all your images. A couple of questions in on the chat, um, Andy. First up from Anne. Do you use any filters for Astro, in camera or external? Um, so the only filter I use for Astro is I will use a light, production, pr uh, light reduction filter, uh, so light pollution filter. Um, and if I have to be get clever, like I did with that Space Pirate shot, that's the one with the, 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 the fishing boats in front of it. Mm -hmm. If they, there's, there's a massive spotlight behind you when you're still on that beach, and I basically, yeah, I used a, a grad inverted there just to take the uh, exposure down on the, on the boats. Um, but no, Astro, you know, it, is, is one of those things where you can get, like, seriously into it and get modified sort of like sensors and stuff that reduce remove ex, remove filters that are naturally on a camera um so so nothing major the one thing we have i have got and i haven't had a chance to play with properly is that um alan wallace who's a case ambassador and an amazing astrophotography mm -hmm. uh photographer uh, has launched a filter that's uh, this year called the the um uh, the star glow that's one filter i definitely have in my bag and i'm ready to use so uh, i just need to find a perfect time to do it so, yeah. fantastic and hopefully that was uh, helpful another one from julian julian Baird said you're spoiled for choice in the southwest for photo locations but do you have a bucket list location or astro event that you want to photograph um i would love to get out to some of the american deserts where you can see a 360 degree with no light pollution and basically yeah i mean a shot that i've never captured or never tried to capture is where you see people get the complete arch of the milky way but still have something like a a really strong focal point yeah. sort of like under the arch i i can't see ever being able to do that in the uk easily so yeah i'd like to go somewhere that's really dark big open wide spaces massive skies where you could do it yeah. Wow, fantastic. Well, if anyone's listening from the middle of the desert uh, over in the US, then I'm sure Andy wouldn't, wouldn't say no. From. I'm sure there's places in Africa as well. <laughs> you can do it, but that's where, you yeah. Know. Anywhere yeah. with any big open spaces, like say dark skies. Brilliant. Yeah. I mean, t talking obviously Astro in particular, there's a lot of work that goes on in post in order to make yeah. that final image. When it comes to post processing, what's your personal approach? Oh, um, Either do or, or otherwise. No, no. I guess do whatever it takes to make the image look really good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I have some personal boundaries that I don't like to cross, but this is not advice to everyone because everyone does it how they want to do it, and that's absolutely fine. My personal boundaries is generally I will not add anything that wasn't there, but I will happily remove stuff that I couldn't remove because it was in the way of my photo. <laughs> so for like minimalist stuff, if there's like a, I want one or two minimalist things in my shot if there's a yeah. third one in there that i couldn't frame without you know without getting rid of it then actually get that clone that one out that's not a problem um and and, and i think for the astro stuff i'll enhance the bits i want people to see 
if that makes sense. So in post-processing, you've got a raw image and a raw image is, is basically just a, a piece of putty and you can mold that putty however you want to. You can pinch it here, you can pull it there, you can stretch it there. You can make it look whatever you want it to make it look. As long as the end result looks how you want it to look, mm -hmm. then that's fine, yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah, that's fine. That's my, my fault. That's, that's your, fair enough, everyone's got, everyone's got their, own, uh, their own ways of going about it. I think with minimalists in particular, you know, it's art in the end of the day, so you can, you can push yeah, those things. I, I guess, it doesn't I have to it, be... I guess it is art, uh, yeah. yeah. And it's, uh, I, it, I always go into a shot, generally 90% of the time, knowing what it's going to look like when I've pro processed it. Uh, it doesn't always happen because you'll get to the location and you think i've got this idea of a shot and then the conditions turn mm -hmm. you on your head That's and you're like well i've got to work with the conditions here but yeah i'll, I'll generally know and 90 percent of the time yeah when i get back and process that shot that's how it ends up how i've seen it yeah yeah, yeah absolutely uh mike is asking andy what case products this is your case hat on which case yeah. products are in development uh, that we can look forward to um yeah, too many. Any, any too ones many. you can say? Yeah. No, yeah, too many to uh, to mention. There's some really good things coming up. Um, nothing that I'm ready to announce yet. Um, but you know, keep watching our social media. That's where we we tell people about it, basically. Okay, fantastic. There you go, Mike. That, that was, um, that was the politician's yeah. answer, wasn't it? Yeah, he's talked around it. What do they call that? Circumlocution. He talks around the question, but yeah, exciting yeah. stuff. Social media, yeah. check that out. Um, uh what am i talking about memorable moments andy good or bad do you have any that come to mind immediately um i have a few i think the, the funniest now but at the time no. was not the funniest was um a, was a ninja lamb creeping up on me and giving me almost a heart attack so i was shooting a ninja lamb? yeah i was shooting <laughs> astrophotography on the Devon coast with a lighthouse and those that are from Devon will know you know where i'm talking about it's um uh, down on the uh, on the um, the South Hams part of Devon, and uh, I was perched on the. It's a very rocky crag that you sort of like you, you perch on. I was sat there minding my own business. I had my headphones in to a degree. Uh, I've got some like clever headphones that don't go in your ears, so you can still hear things. Okay, like, it works for your bones. Yeah, it's like bone conducting headphones. Oh, I, so I have those. Yeah. I have them as like a bit of company, podcast or music going on in the background whilst I'm there in the middle of nowhere on my own. And um, I was just sitting there waiting for the perfect conditions. And all of a sudden, right there, there was this high-pitched bleating from a lamb. How it crept up on me, I do not have the foggiest clue. But I jumped a mile. I almost sent my camera over the cliff. I almost went over the cliff myself. Oh, and I, I saw, like, I got back and uh, my wife asked me, she said, how is it going? I said, I, I almost had a heart attack. But apart from that, it was really good. It just doesn't so, sound impressive, though, does it? You nearly had a heart attack. A, a lamb, a killer lamb, a monster yes, lamb snuck I, up on you. I, I named it a ninja lamb because yeah. it, it snuck up on me. I mean, normally you can hear a sheep or an animal or something. And, and I mean, it, if you're in the middle of nowhere, they do freak you out, the noises. There's no denying it. But you normally go, all right, I know that's a sheep. But this thing, yeah, it, it got within about 30 centimetres of, <laughs> uh, centimeters of me without me even knowing it was there. No, you can I just wouldn't. Yeah. Sheep, yeah. No, they are um, just a yeah and I, in front of me yeah yeah and i think other memorable moments is it's it, the one that springs to mind but it, this answers the whole thing really is that um once again i was on the north cornish coast um taking a picture it was actually a stunning sunset i was there i was enjoying the moment um and all of a sudden there was a shoal of dolphins just started playing in the waves below me and mm. surfing waves. No, I couldn't take a picture of them because you needed a, a zoom lens. I'm not a nature photographer, but just sat there watching that happen. And I was like, this is why I do this. This is yeah. the reason I do this. Mm -hmm. And we're probably all guilty of this as photographers. Actually, we sometimes get sort of like too het up in the technical, must capture this perfect image of this amazing scene because mm -hmm. I've got to watch about that or that or that. And we forget to sit down, have, take a breath, and Enjoy look it. around us mm -hmm. yeah and then you go wow this is pretty amazing look at this yeah. look at this place i live in yeah. yeah i know it's stunning it's like it's, it's like an addiction in a wee bit it's like it's quite hard to just switch the camera off and choose not to take a photo and just yeah. actually enjoy enjoy where you are i know i love that ninja lamb and then yeah. uh some <laughs> some gorgeous ninja, dolphins. dolphins yeah um and then any time that the conditions are perfect yeah yeah, no, yeah. it's always gorgeous i mean shot on your head do you have any shots on your head right now that you're you're maybe planning you're waiting for conditions to be right i mean what's what's the kind of longest time 
uh, or maybe it's ongoing just now that you've waited for conditions to, to be in the place that you want them to be. I noticed you had a picture up, in fact, earlier of a, was an oak tree, or a big gnarled tree anywhere. I know you're waiting for fog to come yeah. in to make that yeah. one, right? I mean, this is, uh, this is the, 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 the fickleness of photography, in effect. I've been waiting for that tree to be in fog for a long, long time. <laughs> I got there when it was, and the shot was rubbish. Oh, and I was like, no, no, two years I'd visited this tree for, and I thought it'd be perfect in the mist, perfect in the mist. And then, no, it wasn't. It was absolutely useless. In it the wasn't mist, the photographer. Like, it wasn't the camera. It was definitely the conditions. That it, no, I tried. I tried to make a decent <laughs> shot of it, but it just was not going to happen. So I was you like, were there okay, with a no. smoke machine and just, you know, try, yeah, trying to yeah, make yeah. the shot. No, it, it just lost what what made it a nice tree it lost when you couldn't see it in the fog but unfortunately a nice tree with a rubbish background makes for a rubbish shot so yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah so uh, i've done that i've got a there's, there's two kind of things on my on my like list of things i really want to do so one is i once saw an article about a guy who went to i'm trying to remember it's i think it's copenhagen and in copenhagen they have the most amazing subway stations in the world and that is something that I've been planning to go and take pictures of myself because it's that's right up my street doing a bit of like um, city stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd love to capture this, but actually just getting the, the time to do it. I actually was meant to be doing it last year and then COVID. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm not sure when that's going to happen. So that's one thing that I've got planning and it's still going to happen. And then, um, yeah, I have one location for Milky Way, which I've never got the perfect conditions in, which I will just keep visiting until I do, basically. Mm, yeah. yeah. I mean, speaking of your cityscapes, those are some of my, I mean, I love those kind of things anyway, but some of your, my favourite images of yours, they're just some stunning ones. The Canary Eye, one you took in yeah. Canary Eye, a one in, a, I think, a train station as well. Is that a train station? Something like that. Anyway, very sci-fi, which isn't something you see very often. Even in cityscapes, it's not something you see very often. And it's one of those things, it makes you feel something, which I love in that kind of photograph i mean is that something you go out and just you know you spot it and you take it while you're traveling about or is that something you plan as well um that was planned that was location based planning basically that was mm -hmm. uh trawling the web the web the web to find locations that fit this kind of idea i had of of, of getting it, yeah that, that, it was a series of free images i want to do a lot more but they kind of all have a central eye in them in effect yeah, it, that's what the images are like um and yeah, it was just it was just location based, like go look at everyone's shots of around there and find something that fits and see mm -hmm. if I can make it work. And then being lucky possibly when I'm there. So yeah. Yeah, no, they're, they're, I love them. I absolutely love them. Um, top tips or advice, Andy? I mean, you've been in the game for a whopping eight years now. Um, if someone's just starting out either in astro or in landscape in general, maybe just photography in general, do you have any anything you've learnt along the way that you think would be uh, good wisdom to pass on someone who's just starting out? Yes. Do what you enjoy. Don't care what other people tell you. Just, just if some, If you want advice, ask for it and then listen to the advice. But otherwise, just take lots of pictures. Doesn't matter if they're crap. You don't have to show them to everyone. Learn from that. Eat, sheet, repeat, uh, eat, shoot, repeat. Basically, that's that's my advice. Just go out and do it. Enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, you'll never be good at it. If you do enjoy it, what you'll find is that you know your photography evolves. People start recognising it a bit more. You might be lucky. You might win a competition or two or something like that. And if you do, that's amazing. If you don't, mm. it still doesn't matter. Just enjoy it. I mean, I that's looked true. at some of my stuff my early stuff which i keep online on Flickr, for example just to remind myself how much i've become along as a photographer but then i had to think to myself at the time i thought that was amazing and i also really enjoyed doing it then i really enjoyed it and i've enjoyed every part of my journey of getting to somewhere where i now might get nicer peer reviews than i did before yeah but it doesn't really matter i don't shoot for anyone other than me yeah I think that's yeah that's huge and yeah. that's like say what most top photographers all say you have to be passionate about the subject for it to go anywhere at all yeah um yeah. which i love no that's fantastic um changing tack altogether favorite filters uh do you have a favorite case oh, filter favorite that you use? i mean um, i know you use different ones for different things um is, is there one that you always in your bag always on your camera um i i, I do I, I love my minimal, min, oh, minimalist mm. stuff so yeah, yeah. Easy, yes. easy for me to say. Yeah. I should stop drinking beer at this time of day. Um, no, I love my min minimal. I still can't say. It. I love my <laughs> minimal stuff. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, so the ten stop uh, and the six stop ND uh, is always in my camera bag because of that. Um, and then astrophotography. Then um, I, I just basically I'm, 
I'm kind of cheating. I work for Case, so filters aren't a problem say, for me. You've got yeah. Access, yeah, I've got access to whether I'm using round filters, square filters, and I use all the systems and quite happy mm -hmm. with it. And they're always there, and I just take what I need for that shoot, basically. Yeah, so, no, it's a nice yeah. position to be in. Um, this is an optional question that I'm going to be throwing in from now on. Camera bags, do you own many? Are you one of these people that stocks up on camera bags and you open a cupboard up on the off fallout and you haven't quite found your favourite yet? Or have you, yeah. have you got one that you just you you're found it and you use it? Every photographer. I do not know a single photographer that's ever found the right bag straight away. I've Which got is one why I like I'm use. determined to ask until I find someone who goes, yeah, I found this one when I was 17 and I still use it. No. It's not happened okay. yet. I, I think as your equipment evolves, then perhaps your need for a bag evolves. So actually, then you need a bigger <laughs> bag or one that it can fit in maybe. I mean, my bags have generally got bigger, 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 a little bit smaller. And I've settled mm -hmm. on the little bit smaller one because I can get everything I need to get into it, basically. Yeah. It's like the way the phones went. They're smaller, 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 then they kind of got bigger and bigger and bigger. And now they're getting smarter. So I imagine bags are maybe just going to uh, go the same way. No, I love it. Yeah. Um, it's got to isn't it? Yeah, well, absolutely, it's got to be comfortable. And I imagine if yeah. you're in a city or something, you want you don't want a, a big mountain rucksack. You know, you might want something a bit uh, easier to, you know, yeah, carry your kit about in. So there's always yeah. an excuse for a new bag. Um, we mentioned at the beginning you are into cycling and stuff. Obviously, I said that you work for Case. You you go out in the middle of the night, you shoot you and stuff. Whatever, whatever interest, but yeah, cycling is other interests. Yeah, interest, basically. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, to the point now that yeah, um, it's almost become a little bit all consuming that whenever I get some spare time that isn't good for photography, then I'll be out on the bike. And uh, yeah. And because of that, I've now signed up as well. And this is my perfect time to plug this. Um, <laughs> I've signed up for a, a couple charity rides, one this year, one next year. It was the one this year. Uh, I've hopefully, um, we've got the link down in the, uh, in the description now. So you can all sponsor me. That's a hundred miler. And Thank then next you. year it's 120 miles that's the one that should have been this year but obviously due to covid it was it's abroad so i couldn't do it yeah but so where, yeah, are, they, where are they happening then are they in the uk or so are they this year is local in devon um and it's uh, just a, a a little ride around devon 100 miles yeah um <laughs> and the one next year is actually in denmark so um oh, nice yeah Fingers and crossed. that's yeah um and they're both for charity um i, I have uh Charities I work with generally, they're around a cancer charity uh, just because of things that have happened in my life. Um, you know, not to me personally, if I touch some wood, um, but to people I know or people I care about. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so that's what I'm doing it for. I'm doing it for a local charity this time for who does uh, in home care for people who are suffering from cancer. And then uh, next year it's for prostate cancer. But uh, yeah, if you fancy sponsoring me, I would really appreciate it. Um, and I've even got. A nice case of getting involved, so we've got a nice, uh, a nice, oh, nice, a nice corporate cycling top going on as well. That, that could be next year's uh, Christmas gift, I think. It looks very, very swish. Are you taking your uh, camera with you, Andy? Uh, it, no, the, the, <laughs> when you when you cycle on a road bike, you want to be as light as possible. So actually, yeah, carry your rucksack. But I have tried taking my drone with me and had a bit of fun using my drone while cycling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that doesn't have to be on you. That can be above you, just following you. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Exactly. I even got like a, I even got a handlebar mount where you can mount the hand the, the remote on the handlebar, so uh, so it can be all safe and stuff. So yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So, so link in yeah. the description if anybody I think wants to check that out. Best of luck with that, um, Andy. Thank you very much. I mean. What about just looking ahead briefly? I mean, do you have anything coming up uh, non-cycling wise in the world of photography? Any future projects, personal projects that you're that you've got um, in your head just now? Um, well, it's it's astro season at the moment, and we're having unseasonably good weather at the moment. So I think I'm going to wait for the moon to disappear again, and then you'll probably find me looking around in somewhere on the Devon coast or Dorset coast uh, in the dark. Um, I've got a, a nice new lens to do with to have a play with on that one. Um, apart from that, no, I don't have anything major planned. It's just going to be a, a case to see how the year goes. Yeah. You know, we, we we don't know where we're going in the year with with anything and travel and stuff like that yet. Um, and to be fair, work's keeping me nice and busy, which is really nice. So mm -hmm. um, you know, I think I, I like I said, I don't get as much chance to shoot photos now because I'm actually more behind the scenes when it comes to photography and actually helping support you know the, the wonderful guys like yourselves and that have been on the channel mm -hmm. here doing this yeah. for us mm -hmm. um so uh, yeah I, I shall live live through them basically yeah. 
Brilliant. Well, listen, I think that's about all we've got time for. Andy, just uh, where can people find out more about your work? Have you, have you got a website? I don't know you've got social media channels. Yeah, you can find me on social media if you search for uh, Andrew, I, I go with my full name, uh, Andrew Campbell <laughs> Photography or andrewcampbell.co.uk. Um, you can see my work and, and see what I've been up to and, 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 and follow me. And that'd be great. I'd love to see you. Yeah, fantastic. Well, Andy, thank you so much for letting me uh, chat to you again tonight. Yeah, uh, no, it's, been, it's been great again. Thank you. Just as good second time round. Um, so that's absolutely fantastic. And thank you so much to everybody as well that's tuned in, who's asked questions there in the live chat. We'll be back in a fortnight's time. Uh, do I have the date? I do. Sunday the 9th of May, I will be speaking to Marcus McAdam, um, who is one of my colleagues. So that's going to be very interesting, someone I know very well. Um, so tune in for that um, on the 9th of May, same time, 7 p.m., right here on the Case Filters UK YouTube channel. Uh, Casefilters.com, if you want to check out the full schedule for the whole year, we've got a whole pile of fantastic photographers uh, coming up. So you can plan ahead, check those out for yourself, casefilters.com uh, for those guests. I think that's about it for tonight. So from me and from Andy as well, we're going to go back out into the sunshine, I think, while it's still uh, nice. Yeah. And uh, everybody else as well, I think. So have a great rest of the evening. Have a great fortnight uh, until we see you next time. So good night. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.